Hey, it's Scott Tempesta from Sailing Anarchy. We are back with yet another retro boat video. We cover a lot of time in these videos. We got boats that go back early 1900s. We got some boats that are a little more modern that we're gonna be doing, but right now we're gonna go straight 80s, yo. Like, pure disco. Uh, I know a bit about this boat because I raced on one, and I'll tell you a little bit about that when we show you the boat, but here's what I want to do. I want you to say hello to the Santana 3030 Grand Prix. One, two, three. Listen. So here's our 3030, the Grand Prix. You may know this boat. They made two models. They made a 3030 PC, which I think was the performance cruiser. We like to call that the Winnebago. It's the same hull, same rig, but a giant cabin house. I mean, giant. If I said the house was this tall, I'd be about right. Took up a lot of the decks. Nice inside, but not necessarily the greatest race boat. The PCs had less weight in the keel, they were heavier overall, and they had a ton of weight up, up, up. So the boats were tippy, they had smaller cockpits. You know, they were just not really, neither fish nor fowl. You wouldn't really cruise on one, and you kind of got tired of racing on them because you realized they just weren't that quick. Shock realized that, Shock, WD Shock, is the builder of these boats. They made about 100 in total, total split almost down the middle, about 40-ish or so of the 3030 PCs and 3030 of the GPs, which is what we're looking at here. Bruce Nelson, actually Bruce Nelson and Bruce Merrick, uh, designed the boat. It was designed for the Morsi rule, which is midget ocean racing class. So what that meant is you had to have midgets on board. No crew could be taller than like 3'7". Like that was it. That was midget ocean racing. No, it's what they called the boats because they were 30 feet and under, and so I guess somebody deemed them midgets. I don't know, probably could have picked a better word. So what Nelson did when they redid this thing is they kept basically the same hull. They put a little bit more lead in the keel. I don't know if it was deeper, but I'm guessing that it was slightly deeper. And then obviously they saved a ton of weight by taking that old giant cabin house off, putting on this nice looking profile on this I mean, the 3030 has always been a nice looking boat. And to this day, the cabin looks nice, right? Really small, compact, nice windows. What's great about it is it opens things up. Obviously on deck, things are opened up. Visibility opens up a ton, believe it or not, because you're in the cockpit and it's a fairly deep cockpit. You know, and the house is sticking up this much. I mean, it's like, are we gonna hit anybody? Um, so this is really nice. And they made this obviously for racing, hence the Grand Prix. Uh, they took a lot of stuff out from down below and we'll go down there and I'll show you that. The boats were really good boats, uh, mostly for light air. They had a little problem and they still have a problem tipping over a little bit of breeze. They like to stick their nose in going up wind a little bit. It's got a big giant booty on it and y'all know how much I like the big booty with a rudder that had a tendency to want to pop out. So both the 3030 PC, which I raced on, and the 3030 Grand Prix which I had, I raced on for a year. The owner, a guy named Bob Hatch, wonderful man, actually, believe it or not, gave it to me for a year to race. So I'm like, uh, okay, sure. Um, the boats didn't like to reach with spinnakers. They didn't like to reach much at all, but with spinnakers, they were really bad because as soon as the nose stuck in a little bit, as soon as the boat started to tip, being relatively wide back there, the rudder would just eat and the boat would sh So what they did is they added an elliptical keel and an elliptical rudder to the boats, later model years. I think this is about an 80, mid 80s boat. They started making them, believe it or not, in 81, and that was the PC. And they, they did the run of those and they switched over mid to late 80s and then built all the GP boats. Come on, I'll show you the cockpit. Here we are in the cockpit, pretty obviously. This boat has a modification that most of them don't. Uh, inboard engine controls are right there. You can see there's a cutout here for the wheel and the, the original owner before this had a wheel, put a wheel on the boat. I think they wanted to make it a little bit more accessible for handicap. So they put a big wheel back here. This normally isn't here at all. The deck just goes straight back here. But again, you can see that it's big, it's wide, it's open. It's nice with these decks. Um, 
I mean, this is how you kind of want a race boat to be. Just everything is right there. Nothing's complicated. The boats are fairly wide. And uh, so there's a lot of side deck, obviously. Oh, here's something that they started to do. You remember the, the rail? Everybody used to complain about the goddamn tow rail, right? Digging the back of your legs. No, no, they decided to do a little something for that. So while you're hiking, I mean, I've never actually hiked, but they tell me uh, when you hike up here, so these little ramps kind of lift your legs up above this. Otherwise, those would be digging in to my delicate thighs and that just wouldn't be any good. But yeah, so it's, Fairly comfortable place and nice and cozy, right? Pretty much everybody knows where to sit. So to sit along here. With these boats, again, fairly fine in the front. Big, big butt in the back. Soon as the breeze is on, you want to start sliding people off just to keep that out and keep that in. But it's just a nice little touch that they did. So the cockpit is, as I said, and as you can see, huge, easy. Um, they did a nice job, I thought, with the whole area for halyards and she uh, adjustments cunningham all that stuff they really did put everything right here and so for the pit person there it is you can either stand on the top ladder and grab and do all this stuff or you can just simply step back do halyards here do halyards here again i don't know i've never pulled a halyard up actually ever but that's what they tell me apparently you put it on i guess it'd be clockwise kidding of course so it is nice i mean that's why the boat has a clean look obviously not here it's not clean and trust me once you're racing it's not clean at all there's you know lines and halyards everywhere but there it all is there's no guessing with anything let's see the primaries on this thing let's have a look oh yeah it's a serious winching these boats have big genoas i mean it's a giant masthead rig double spreader and they use little check stays on these things. I don't know if he has them. Yeah, he does use a little check stays just to, again, when you're bending the mass going upwind, you don't want it to overbend, which it'll tend to do when you put on hydraulic pressure. So you put the check stays on, keep the mass from overbending and also control the mainsail luff and keep the, the fullness or flatness however you want. You can actually really nicely control that with the check stays. So there it is, Santana 3030 on deck. What you see is what you get. Let's go down below because I'll show you some more simple. So back in the 80s, they tried to make the boat have some creature comforts and they did interesting things. Uh, as I said, this is a really stripped out boat compared to the 3030 PC, the performance cruiser. Um, obviously, you lose a ton of headroom, but that's just the way it is. Um, but you still have the width and the general volume of the boat. So they did a couple of, I mean, this thing's a, not a bad place to be two huge quarter bursts one here one there i mean they're basically doubles you could sleep two there actually i think they're designed to be doubles so two four you could actually sleep six down below this boat they um maybe in the effort to get some weight aft in this boat they put the galley as such as it were the sink right there and then opposite side is the ice chest and a little place where you could theoretically navigate all the electronics are over there you know if you had to spend some time on the boat for example, I raced one of these things on the Newport to Ensenada race way back in the day. I'm guessing a mid to late 80s, 80, 89, something like that. Yeah, 88, 89. And we were first in class on the Santana 33 Grand Prix, which was just awesome. Um, the boat was fun. The boat was great. It was a mostly light air race. The boat was fast. And it was kind of nice to come down here. I mean, if you need to wait forward, you could sleep here. Need to wait aft, you could put people there Newport and Sonata race we didn't need anybody aft so most of the people were right in this area if you swing the camera a little bit forward you can see one thing that they did to to lose a lot of weight and that is no v-birth so this is just support structure here there's a marine head here there's a hanging locker there um there's a tank up here I'm assuming this is the head I'm not exactly sure and hmm wow Drugs in there. No, I'm kidding. There's nothing in there. So they wanted to keep weight out of the boat and they did that. Um, these boats were a relatively fine. And so I remember when we were going up wind and hours in any chop at all, the boats had sort of oil can a little bit. No disrespect, shock. You build a pretty damn nice boat in these things. And all the boats are actually pretty nice that shock and Santana's that preceded that. Um, and actually they called this a Santana. 
Okay. It was like the, I think the last one of all of the Santanas, as it were. So open wide, no weight up here. I mean, just put some sails up here for storage. And the idea again was it's a 3030 Grand Prix. We're going to, the idea was to race them. Morsi, which is what almost everybody did. Morsi was a huge class. They were very successful in that class until a fair number of custom boats came along. For example, there was a boat called Babe Ruthless that was a custom built Nelson Merrick 30, but it was light years faster than the 30, 30 Grand Prix. Sometimes you could kind of hang any breeze at all, that boat was gone. So there was a sort of an onslaught of custom Morsi boats that came along. Easy go, 25 footer, there's a whole bunch of them, I'm forgetting, a GNS 27s, Peterson 30 Maxi Morsi boats. So the production boats were really good for exactly what they were. Um, they just it's ultimately couldn't compete with the custom boats. And I think that's kind of in part what sort of put the squash on, on Morsi uh, when you realize that you go to Regatta and there's like four custom boats in your size and you're like, uh, and they're all well sailed, they're all nicely built. Um, and so you're probably not gonna beat them for the most part, but you just kind of get used to it. This boat segued to be a nice PHRF boat since Morsi's gone. Uh, and there's a lot of these everywhere and they race them. And I think these boats rate, one, I think 114, <clears throat> which seems like a gift. I think that gives you a good rundown on what the 3030 Grand Prix is like. They're relatively inexpensive on the used market. Again, for PHRF racing, they're great. That is the Santana 3030 Grand Prix. So that's it. That's our 3030, and that's this episode of Retro Boat. If you want to like, and you already like this thing, so just hit the like button. It's not that hard. And you gotta subscribe to our channel. Duh! There must be like 10 of these up there. And we have some gems coming. Oh my God, you won't believe these. They are the, like amazing boats. And we're gonna share those with you when we're ready to roll. But for Nobleman Productions, for Sailing Anarchy, I'm Scott Tempesta. We're out. <laughs>